Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you my tarp and hammock setup, my preferred methods of stringing it up and how it all goes together. So if you're in the market for a tarp and hammock, this video will shine some light on one of the ways in which a setup like this can go together. If we look at these items a little more closely, you can see that this here is my tarpaulin, a 3x3 DD tarp in Coyote Brown. If any of you have watched my quick deployment tarp system video, then you'll see that this is the set right here that I used in that video. Nothing's changed, it's all pre-strung, compressed, ready to just draw out, and it can be put up in a couple of minutes. And the dry bag means on a wet day it can compress in, and obviously it won't get any other kit damp if it has to go in your backpack, but it can live on the outside as well. And just here we have my hammock, this is a Ticket to the Moon double. I used to use their single, but Ticket to the Moon contacted me and kindly offered me their double hammock and I've been using it for the last couple of years. And this is the hammock, including a, a hammock snake which goes over the whole hammock and all the lines and carabiners all in this set right here. I've used a range of materials in terms of hammocks from mesh to waterproof and my favourite out of all of them, no matter what the brand, is the parachute material. For it to be breathable I just find it allows for a lot less moisture to build up in my sleeping bag and when I hang my bag out and I've stayed out in long periods of time uh, I think involuntarily the longest I have to spend in the woods in this exact setup here is two and a half weeks and although it's very comfortable you do need to hang your sleep system almost every day depending on the weather of course if it's sideways rain then I would, wouldn't advise against it but you're unlikely to get that when there's a canopy above you uh, but this material here just means you don't get too much moisture building up in the bag unlike a waterproof setup and it's far more comfortable than a mesh setup in that case and uh, it's just kind of the best medium for me so a parachute material I do get on very well with but let me show you how it all goes together one piece of equipment that I suggest you get familiar with before you start embarking on going hammock camping or even using a tarpaulin is the tarpaulin itself. It's really the roof of all your setups but it almost acts as the foundation as everything else is built up around it. It can determine a lot of comfort factors, it can determine how well the weather has shed off you, the wind, um, how everything sits underneath it, how much condensation builds up on the roof and starts tripping on you in the night. It really is the first thing that could go up simply because it's the biggest item and you're in a, an environment where there's lots of obstacles around. So getting that big item up first usually means everything else will take shape underneath it very easily. Mine is a DD 3x3, 3 meters by 3 meters, And I have a very good idea of how big this tarp is and I have a fail safe for if I get to an area and I'm unsure about the terrain. Perhaps it's very hilly, the trees are leaning on obscure angles and I really need to understand whether it's going to fit or not before I go to all the trouble of putting it up and then realising that I have to pack it away or drag it around somewhere and move it. And it's really simple. You just lay your tarp out on a nice big area, whether it's at home in the garden, inside somewhere, or even out in the woods. And you just walk from heel to toe, from one end to the other, and count how many steps it takes you to get there. I know for a fact that as a diamond setup, it takes me 16 and a half steps to get from point to point. And as a square, it's 13 and a half. So I've always got that in my itinerary. If something goes wrong, I can think, right, okay, we have a tree here, a tree there. I'm not sure how far away they are from each other. They look a little close. I'm gonna measure it out. I've picked two trees here. We've got a Norway spruce here. It's of a pretty good size. It's not too big. I don't generally pick trees that are really large and round unless I have to, because they use up a lot of cordage, which is material for me, cordage, on your setup here equals distance lost in between the trees. So if you've got a massive trunk using up meters and meters of cordage, then you're losing distance on your setup. I'm also checking above me as well. We've got no deadfall, really important that. Something I talk about on all my videos when we're setting up shelters and setups like this, or you see me out camping, I always check what's above me. Are there any dead branches, dead limbs? We do have a Norway spruce there that looks pretty dead. If I was gonna stay here, I could just take that down pretty easily. It's very rotten at the base. I think that would probably only require a push and it would come down. But we've got another tree just over there, another Norway spruce. Even though I'm pretty sure that this is an ideal distance, I can always use the fail safe. And if you're new to camping in this kind of manner, then this is a perfect thing to do. So we can just count and if we get there with 16 steps, then it's ideal. One, two, 
15, 16. So you can see 16 steps and I've already got four or five meters just between me and the actual trunk there. But the first thing I generally start with is this. So we'll get it unclipped and unstrung and get it knotted to this first tree here. If you open up the dry bag, what we have at the very, very top is the ridge line of the tarpaulin and it's connected to the center tab of the main spine of the actual tarpaulin and it's connected to just that one for a very good reason which I'll show you momentarily. But what we can do is just get this hank of cord there. We've got two prussic knots pre-connected either side of the centre tab, that's for either end. So if you imagine this is the middle of the tarp, the two ends connect to that as you'll see momentarily. But we're going to pull on this and just get quite a lot of slack of line out. Just like this. Pulling all the line out of the hank of paracord there just allows us to drop the whole tarpaulin and tie it up to the tree without supporting the weight of it all, which can affect the knot you're actually tying. But if we go to the very end, you'll see that I have a loop just there. And the reason I'm stringing it up to the tree at this height here is so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Normally, if I was stringing my tarp up to the tree, I would string it up at full arm's length like this. And the reason being is so that I was comfortable and I could actually walk underneath my shelter comfortably. I don't like being crouched down underneath my tarpaulin. If the weather's incredibly bad, then it's good to have it a bit lower down just to cut in the sidewall a little bit so you actually get that protection. But normal day-to-day -day work under woodlands like this where you just get vertical rain because of the canopy, it means you can string it up quite high and not get too much coming in from the sides and that's the beauty of camping in woodland, you have a lot of cover. Stringing it to the tree is really simple. You just bring the loop all the way around like this. It goes over the top of the original ridge line. Just pull some slack out so you can go back around again, like that. And then you bring the loop around like this. And then this loop you created by going back over the ridge line, the loop you have tied onto the end of the ridge line goes through that just like this. And then you take a stick from your pocket, once you've picked one up of course, and you just pull that and you just crank it like this, like a ratchet. And then it remains incredibly tight. And the reason that that's so good is because this can now be incredibly loose and you can walk it away quite casually and the stick won't drop out because it's cranked down like a ratchet. And to untie it, you just pull the stick Pull it out like that, and it all comes apart. So this is about how high I would have it. It's about full arm's length, so I wouldn't have it down here unless I was on the ground and I had a slightly different setup. But in a hammock, it's up here. But what we can do now is take our hank of cord and just walk it all the way over to the other tree. I'll tie this knot again so you guys can see it and then I'll put it high up where it's meant to be, but you just feed the line through like this, pulling and feeding through with the other hand to get some tension. The ridge line goes over like that. Bring this back round, create a loop at the top like that, twist it, keeping it close to the actual tree, grabbing the excess, and then just pulling like that, and that's quite a useful quick release knot and if you want to make it last for a few days all you do is put a pin in just like that and then it can't be pulled undone even if the wind and the rain are flapping around it's not going to come loose on you and just to loosen this up you just take the pin out and the whole thing drops down like that but you can see we've got a really nice straight ridge line now and our tarp is just hanging off the center tab with a long ridge line like this, you get the ability to move things around and you can make it very adjustable by tying this tarp up on the center line here. And you do have to support the tarp when you move it or else you can burn straight through this. It's probably a better mod in the future that I'll make as I'll actually strengthen this up and stitch on some real good nylon and actually make this tab better. Because as it stands, it will get burnt away if you start moving it up and down quite a lot on this ridge line here, the cord will just eat through it. But it does, in the meantime, give you some flexibility to move things around 
and by keeping this prussic knots on there nice and loose you can slide them around as well and then pull them to tighten them when you actually need them. Tying a prussic knot is really easy you can see I've just got some bungee cord there and I've just tied a knot so I've got the two pieces of cord and just knotted them together just like that very simple you created a loop you just place the loop over the piece of cord pull it back through itself like that and then place one through the other and there you have a prussic knot or a fist knot as it's often called because it looks like a fist and it grips the cord like a fist like that so you can pull on this loop here to loosen it and then it will move around but again you will wear through it so these will need to be replaced if you do a lot of sliding on your setup and you just pull it nice and tight and then it starts to grip like a pressing knot actually should to support the edges of your tarpaulin. So once you've moved your pressing knots right out to a fair distance you can take the dry bag and pull it off like that. I often just clip mine on and just send it up one end. Having the centre of the tarpaulin connected to the ridge line gives me a lot of options. It gives me the ability to rotate. I can rotate the tarpaulin, have the highest point elevated off the ground, get it all assembled into various configurations and actually understand how the water will run off of it. So that's why I have the centre connected. I do not always have this tarp as a square and I don't want to be unthreading the cord through these tabs here and getting it all untangled and set back up again. I'd rather just rotate it. And if I do want it as a square, I have little bungee tabs connected to each corner, each end of the tarpaulin everywhere, so it can be pulled out and connected to those prussic knots with little tabs, little sticks that just thread through. But my advice to you would be that if you're going to have this tarpaulin or any tarpaulin with nylon tabs and you're going to slide them up and down paracord, that's um, a little bit like a wire saw, it's acting the same way. And after two years, mine's really worse for wear, so I'm going to have to repair that. Um, a better option would be to just have carabiners so you can disconnect them. It, I mean, it's extra weight, hardly at all, as they're mostly aluminium. But it means you're going to save these tabs and you've got just as versatile setup then. You can slide it all around and, um, and change it about as you need to and disconnect the ones you don't need. So that would be a better way to go. So if I want it to be a square, it's really simple. I just take the bungee cord that's always connected to this tab here that runs along the main spine of the tarpaulin take my prussic knot, I pull the bungee through tab on the prussic knot and then just lock it in with a little twig off of the ground and then you just pull it tight like that with the prussic knot and the knot will self tighten obviously as it's got tension on it and there it is set up as a square and I have 15 yards of paracord connected to every corner so it can be strung out and turned into a shelter and you can see that these tabs here are just no longer needed but to do a diamond it's virtually the same thing so to do a diamond we just take one of the corners and you can see I've got a little bit of 550 cord on there the 15 yard line that would go out on the square setup that can just be left to hang so when it goes through this prussic knot here the actual tab itself goes through the prussic knot and a twig goes through the tab just like that and to tighten it we just pull the pressic knot not too fast but just edge it along and where we would have had it tied as a square we end up with two bundles of cord here and here as this is actually the end that would make up the square for us here but obviously it's rotated as a diamond so you can always have these connected and it just makes it really easy and if you hank them properly you can just pull them and walk them out. Sometimes you might walk your line out and find there isn't actually a tree there for you to tie onto. And I always avoid tying things way over like this because it puts stress on one of the pressic knots and it will start to pull on it unevenly and cause it to slip down. So it's good to keep the tab coming out true to its nature and that way you get a much better setup without too many creases and the runoff is much better as well in heavy rain. But you might need to make yourself a peg. I've got a piece of old hazel here, and obviously I always carry an axe on me. And I've just quickly knocked this peg out, found some dead standing, cut it down, and something like this, about a foot long, will be more than adequate, even for soft ground.
At this point, I don't do any fancy knots. I just pull the cord so the tarp is as tight as I want it to be. And then I just wrap it around the peg like this. I've played around with quite a few knots. I really only use practically probably about three in total, actually four. And when it comes to tying pegs, I've tried various knots where you can adjust and tighten things over time. I never bother with them. I just keep everything real simple when I've got setups like this. The simpler it is, the easier it is for me. When you're taking down your setup, you might want to hank up your cord. The way I hank it up is I open my hand out like that, wrap it round my thumb and put it between those two fingers there. And I just keep going like that. And it can involve dragging the cord along the floor, which can pick up debris. And this is why you pinch quite hard with these fingers. And in the wet as well, if you pinch hard there as you do it, it wrings the water out of the actual cord as you bring it towards yourself like that. And when you're left with some slack, make sure you leave yourself enough. You can take it off of your fingers like that, clamp it at that end. I always wrap twice like this and then go back over the line and then you can just continue to wrap it round and again it's just a really easy way of doing something and it means it can be pulled and it will unravel by itself so you don't need to touch this bit you just pull this and the whole thing will just start to unravel really really easily So I've just pushed this spruce down. It's not particularly tall and ideally that should have been done before this goes up. If you are unsure in the direction it can actually go in, then you really want to do it when you inspect the camp area prior to setup. But I've just done it anyway at this stage because uh, I wasn't particularly keen on it and um, it was coming down anyway. The root structure is very shallow. And if I'd have tied my tarp to this, my tarp would have acted like a sail in heavy winds and it may have even started to rock it and cause it to fall onto my tarpaulin. Uh, which would have been really bad. So pushing it over like this makes it much safer and at the same time it will rot down and do its thing as it would have done if it fallen over naturally but it means I can tie my tarpaulin at the perfect angle which is this angle here. This is a good angle that I like. It has good runoff and a little bit of cover as well on the sides and I can tie it straight to the root structure here using the same knot we tied on the end of the ridge line there. So this is our tarp set up and you can see as a diamond it's great for a hammock we've got a lot of coverage overhead you can get a bit of a breeze in if you're in warm weather if you're in colder weather you may want to opt for a bigger tarp to actually block the wind off of you but to be honest with you an under quilt will do that for you anyway a good under quilt will really take that hammock through to the colder months but we can cover that in other videos when we look at sleep systems and i can show you mine and what i use with a hammock or when i'm on the ground as well but there are some pros and cons to this setup. My tarp is old. You can see that it's sagging in the middle. No matter how tight I pull it on every corner, it will always remain sagged in the center because it's stretched out and gotten old, unfortunately. So that's a bit of an unfortunate thing just about this tarp and its design, really. But another downside can be that you might want to hang your bag and clothes, and that is a necessity when you're hammock camping. If you don't hang your sleeping bag by the third or fourth day, it'll feel like you're getting in a damp bag, it really will. So you do need to hang it up. But there is a benefit really to the way we've strung it up because it's a pre-strung pre tarp, or well, that's the way I've set it up as, so it can be deployed very quickly. We end up with this spare hank of cord just here. If it was strung up as a square, this would be in use as one of the corners, but we can easily just pull on it and it will unravel and we can tie it the other end and it can then allow us to hang clothes and our bag up very easily. I just use a very simple half hitch to tie this on at the end and just tie it back like that. And if you're really worried about this loop coming undone from weight, you can hook it round the actual peg there and that will keep it taut for you. And then the rest can be hanked up just like this, just to keep it out of the way. You don't want it touching the ground ideally. My hammock setup is very crude but very easy to set up. I've got some straps as you open it just there and we just need to take these out. And we have two of these, there's actually one unit even though it's green and black 
One part is for strapping to the tree, which is the really, really thick rope. And the reason I use a thicker, softer rope is so it doesn't damage the bark on the tree. You can get straps, although I've never really found I've needed to use them. Even with prolonged periods of time, this rope has been absolutely fine. And it really does depend on what species of tree you hook up to. And this side here is a much tighter weave. It generally doesn't wick water as badly. And this connects up to the actual hammock. But we can hang this from the ridge line while we work. And it just stops it collecting lots of rubbish when it's on the floor. But we can get that over there out of the way and get this hooked up to the tree. I usually string my hammocks up really high, especially when I'm in between tall trees like this. They go up above the ridge line just there. And this green line can wrap around several times. If you've got a very, very thin tree, it can go around a few times like this. And you pull the cord, take it through that loop there, and then it's hooked up to the tree. But an easy thing to do now is just connect this up. It doesn't matter how it connects to the carabiner just yet. I never really fuss over that at this moment. I usually tweak that at the end. And we can just walk this all the way out now to the other tree and get our second line up and just clip this on the ridge line just to keep things off the ground. When I walk this over here, I normally just hook it on one of these tags here. Just keeps it off the ground, allows me to get things set up without it draping around on the floor. And I can get these other lines strung to the tree. So again, it's the same system as the other side. Just string up nice and high. You can go round as many times as you want, depending on the tree. Once is fine in this case, because we've got quite a distance to cover. And then we just go straight back. So you can see on this tight black rope here, we've just got knots put in every seven inches or so. And these are just adjustments that you can move yourself. I'm just going to connect mine up to this one here. And then we can just tweak this whole setup and get it all how we want it to be. Once I've clipped these on to where I want them to be, the important part usually is that I turn this round. So the cord locks in like that and you have a, a low point on the carabiner that just causes everything to drip down there. It's very unlikely, even if it twists like this, that it would ever make it past and go into these lines. But it's just nice to ensure that you have your setup as good as it can be to be able to fend off the weather. And you can always tuck this part back and just hook the knot through the piece of cord to create another low spot there so everything runs downhill. And now we can just take the hammock sock off. It's just on sleeves. This goes to the end like that. And then we just make sure everything's how we want it to be. Nice big hammock, get a lot of space in that. I would always get in your hammock first and try things out before you get all your sleep system in there, just to make sure that it's all set up right. You might need to tweak it, you might want to tighten it up because it's sagging down too low to the ground. Sometimes mine's a little bit higher than this, sometimes it's about as low as this. This is the lowest it will get. And uh, I don't normally mind that too much, I've got a lot of cover above me and the rain doesn't come in sideways like it does in open plains. So really just got to worry about a bit of wind and uh, some vertical rain. But some of you may ask, why don't I use a mozzie net? I never use a mozzie net or a midge net as we uh, probably more likely need over here in the, the British Isles. Um, but what I generally do, because I've got a double, is I can close this up really easily. And uh, they don't normally bother me. It's a very comfortable setup. And all I would suggest is that you invest in some decent tree straps, you make sure you've got drip lines or carabiners to stop the rain, those are the most important things. The tarpaulin overhead, just make sure it's strung up properly and not folded over in a, in a really bad way or anything. And um, yeah, you should have a very, very pleasant night. And if one end's lower than the other, I suggest you just make them equal. You don't want one end higher or lower than the other, because if it's higher, you'll slope down inside the hammock through the night. If it's lower, you'll get a bit of blood rushing to your head as you sleep, if that's your head end. And um, you know, it can, uh, can be a bit annoying really getting headaches the next day. So just make sure they're equal. But it's a very comfortable setup, the hammock, nice and lightweight and um, good for weather like this that's humid and warm, where you need a bit of air to cool you down. So this is my setup, guys. This is how I put it together and it's been, been this way for for years really I haven't changed it there are certain elements to it that are quite crude 
could need could do with improving things like that tab on the top there getting a lot of friction on it from the cord and it's eventually going to break but I can sort that out I'm pretty handy with a needle and thread and I can just put some tougher nylon on there much smoother tighter weave stuff that'll um that just won't wear down and probably wear the paracord instead of the tab uh, other things maybe the tree straps I could probably do with some flatter straps but I just never had any and um, I just got some rope and used that and just made sure it was nice and long so I could uh, you know put it in between trees that were quite far apart so there are there is some crude elements to this this is by no means a, a demonstration of um, a very high-tech setup you can see my setup is pretty pretty basic really but I mean that's the way I like it, I like it easy, real simple, it's quick to put up, it takes me probably less than four minutes to get this all strung up when I'm out here and I'm putting it together. It's a very very quick setup and um, and that's the main thing for me, is getting it up quickly. I don't like faffing around, throwing my tarp over the top of the ridge line, getting it all tightened up. I'd rather take the, you know, the, the, the downside of having the the ridge line over the top of the tarp and just running a secondary one underneath for my sleeping bag and clothing and just do it that way because I prefer the ease of setting up rather than chucking my tarp over separately um, and that's really the main thing because a lot of the time setting up is half the battle you've got to put this away the easier it is to set up the easier it will be to put away if you've watched my tarpaulin video like I referred to earlier in the video the quick deployment video you'll see that this tarp goes away as fast as it's put up whether it's wet or dry, it doesn't matter. It gets stuffed in that dry bag, not folded. If you fold things, you just get fold lines and they just go white eventually and, um, and you'll just get a wear in that area, just weakening the fabric constantly in one area. If you crush things away, the fold lines are random and the life expectancy of that garment will last a lot longer. And that's really a fact, to be fair. Same with the hammock though, the sock goes over it, it gets stuffed in this bag here, all the cords get unclipped and stuffed in, and the whole thing just goes back together very quickly. So that's the main things for me. That's why I like this setup, that's why I've stuck with it for so long. And you'll find that when you're out doing things in the outdoors, whether they're very, very primitive or you're using equipment like this, the easier something is, the more often you will do it and the longer it will stay that way and this may just be tweaked in the future here and there if a good product comes out. I've used whoopee slings, not keen on them really, used to use them on my old DD setup, I don't bother with them anymore, I just prefer a carabiner and rope because a lot of my kit isn't really set up to be as light as possible, um, it's really a trade-off between the two, if it's very functional it can double up as something else like this rope can and it can be set up quickly and it's strong and it works then I'll carry it and uh, it won't always be the lightest setup but it'll be more often than not a good setup that'll be uh, functional and strong. So I hope this video has helped you out. I hope it shines some light on how I, I run my setup here. And um, thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you very soon in another video. And if you're interested in any of the products that are in this video, see the links below in the description and obviously the links to other videos in the description on these setups here. Thanks again. Take care.